You're listening to the Life with Old Dogs podcast, and I'm your host, Dawn Memna, primary caretaker of all of our wonderful senior German Shepherds right here at Woody's Place Senior German Shepherd Sanctuary. All right. So um, I'm outside. Yeah. I'm recording today outside. Um, it's a beautiful day or what I consider to be a beautiful day. And, I, and we don't get a whole lot of what I think are beautiful days here. So I'm recording outside today. So you may hear noise. You may hear cars going by. I have the um, Roombas running uh, inside the sanctuary. So you may hear that. Birds chirping, all that good stuff. Um, <clears throat> it's all good. It's all good. So this is our last episode uh, for Season 7, well, Life with Old Dogs podcast. Um, c- talked all about uh, different dog foods, different varieties of dog foods, um, commercial brand, canned, freeze-dried, dehydrated, um, kibble, uh, home-cooked, and raw. And um, shared with you that I try to be eclectic here with the Woody's Place residents, but I mostly rely on home cooked. Um, so this episode here is something that's often overlooked when um, when caring for our older German Shepherds or any dog for that matter, and that is the snacks that that uh, we are providing for them. So this episode is actually called. Uh, senior snackers, because Lord knows I have a lot of senior snackers here. I mean, <clears throat> if if there is one thing the Woody's Place residents, past, present, and I'm betting future, love to do, it's snacks. <laughs> they look forward to their snacks. So, um, But again, getting back to the home cooked. So this is senior snackers, the health benefits of homemade dog treats. Um, And it's really not that hard. It really isn't that hard. And I am going to include, um, let's see, how many recipes do I have here? Okay, well, I'm going to include one, no, one, two, three. I'm going to include three recipes in the show notes, and I'll put them up on social media too, uh, for homemade dog treats that we make here, I make here at the sanctuary. Um, Now, are these nutritionally balanced? Um, no, because they're not a meal. It's it's a snack, and, and that's it. Um, so you do have to factor in the calories of these treats if you're doing home-cooked because, um, well, whether you do home-cooked or, or commercial, it doesn't matter. If you give your dog too many treats, especially uh, a senior dog, they're going to end up overweight and unhealthy. All right? So, um, so just keep that in mind. Snacks and cookies are just that. They're, they're something special. Um, not to be, not to be, um, eaten all day throughout the day. All right. So as our dogs age, again, we've covered this or I've covered this numerous times. They're sub, um, subjected to illness and disease. Um, basically their body, just like us is aging, decaying, um, breaking down. And, um, <clears throat> that's an opening for, disease and illness to enter the body. So um, the goal here is to try to keep our senior dogs as healthy as possible for as long as possible to um, fight off illness and disease. But anyway, older uh, dogs, German Shepherds in particular, are um, subject to um, ailments such as arthritis. That's a big one. Dental disease, digestive problems, um, and, and even changes in their appetite, cancer, things of that nature. I covered all of this in the 20 most common health issues in um, Senior German Shepherds several seasons back in the Life with Old Dogs podcast. But um, I personally feel that homemade treats um because because I know what's going in them and and I, I'm you know I'm uh, getting all the ingredients for those treats. I personally feel that this gives the Woody's Place residents kind of like a shield of armor, um, just like the home cooked food that I give them to um, to you know help keep out the diseases. Um, so store bought. 
Okay, the, the the biggest one that comes to my mind, so let me just back up a second here. Store-bought treats are just like store-bought dog food. There's a spectrum. There's really lousy stuff, there's middle-of-the-road stuff, and there's high-quality stuff. Um, you want to stay away from the low quality. And, and the one that comes to my mind that's low quality are milk bones or meaty bones. Um, <clears throat> there's nothing good in them. Nothing good in them. If you have kids or grandkids, it would be like giving your kid or grandkid Twizzlers all day, every day, you know, or, or, or nerds or <laughs> uh, Skittles or something like that. Like you just wouldn't do that. Um, with a clear conscience and, and things like meaty bones and milk bones are the exact same. Does it hurt to give it to them every once in a while? No, it's not going to make a darn bit of difference, but it does if they're getting it every single day, sometimes multiple times a day. All right. So if you're going to do a commercial brand treat or cookie for your dog, make it a higher end. Okay. It's, it's just, better for them. It's it's probably going to cost you more money, but don't think for one second if you're giving your dog something akin to milk bone or meaty bones that there isn't a price to pay for it because there is, and it's usually their health, All right? So it is just like us in terms of going to the grocery store. Everything that's healthy for us costs more money, and everything that's low quality, high pr process, loaded with preservatives, additives, artificial coloring, ingredients we just can't pronounce that, you know, are probably carcinogenic, are dirt cheap. So our food system is broke for us as humans and for our dogs as well. So I am not a fan of commercial, uh, commercial brand um, dog treats and cookies. And that should come as no surprise to anyone since you, most of you, if you listen to this, know exactly how I feel about commercial brand dog food. Um, that is not to say that I don't use them from time to time. It's, it's just like commercial brand food. I do. It's at the higher end of the spectrum, a, a, a high quality, and I can read the ingredients in there, and I know there hasn't been any recalls or anything like that. Um, so... I do use commercial. Oftentimes, it'll be donated to us from our Amazon wish list, so I get to pick exactly what um, what the dogs here are getting. Um, <clears throat> if if somebody donates uh, a treat or a cookie that I don't use here, I typically end up uh, giving it to the local animal shelter. My reasons for this are I'm, I'm very very strict about what the Woody's Place residents eat ingest. I'm, I'm, I'm ridiculous about it actually, because, um, I've been doing this a very long time and I know that the wrong kind of treat or cookie, all of a sudden someone's itching their ears, someone's licking their paws, someone's got a giant hot spot that now I need to get, you know, help for, um, somebody's got diarrhea. It's just not worth it to me to, to, um, introduce something new that's a commercial brand dog treat or snack and we end up paying for it honestly even if it's at the higher end we've of that uh, quality spectrum we've we've ended up having that so i'm really really picky about about what i have what i get for the dogs i don't want any unwanted ingredients in the treat or cookie for the woody's woody's place residents um and with homemade, with homemade dog treats, you know, you can be creative. You can really mix it up as much as you want. Um, even if one treat calls for beef and your dog, you know, isn't good with ground beef, you could put ground turkey in or, or ground chicken in. Um, if one recipe, you know, calls for carrots, but your dog won't eat carrots, put something else in. Put some asparagus in. Put a little broccoli in. Put, put some green beans in. Put... Put some apples in. Um, you know, it's it's not going to change the recipe consistency that much if you you change a, a like swap a couple of like ingredients in the recipes. So I like that. I like that it, that it's creative. I like I that I know where I'm getting all of the ingredients from, and um, they're wholesome ingredients. Uh, some some good ingredients um, to use. In um, in homemade dog cookies, um, oats. That's that's a really good one. Sweet potatoes, 
pumpkin, carrots, applesauce, peanut butter. Um, you have to make sure there's no xylitol in it, though. Uh, yogurt, plain Greek yogurt. That's another one. Lean meats, like I was just discussing, um, a high, higher quality ground turkey. Uh, I'm sorry, ground beef, uh, turkey, ground chicken, <clears throat> and organ meats. So one thing that... Um, so anyway, let me back up a second here. If you're using ingredients like that, um, you can rest assured that your dog is getting high quality protein in their treat, healthy fats in their treat. You could, you know, put coconut oil in there if you'd like, um, essential vitamins and minerals. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. Fiber, potassium, vitamin C. Um, all of that is is beneficial for our older dogs, again, to help um, ward off disease and illness. Um, not to mention, you you can make um, treats that are like like a, a single source protein. So I do this a lot with with the residents here. Um, I have a dehydrator a food dehydrator. You don't have to have a food dehydrator. You can use your oven for this, but I'll buy like um, beef liver um, or chicken liver or chicken hearts or something like that, chicken gizzards. And um, I put them on the tray. I'll, I'll cut them up if they need to be cut up into strips and whatnot. And I'll put them on the tray in the dehydrator and I dehydrate them. And then I keep the, that in an airtight container. And then I use them as treats for the Woody's Place dog. So that is a high quality single source protein ingredient that I know is beneficial for them. It's low in calories and it counts toward their 10% of organ meat in their diet throughout the day. So <clears throat> if I was if I was to give them some sort of organ uh, dehydrated organ meat as a treat throughout the day, then I'm not including it in their their breakfast and dinner because they should only have 10% of organ meat um, throughout the day, okay, in their diet because too much is too much and it could make them sick. Uh, so calorie counting, that's that's another thing. That's a, a low calorie, um, low calorie, high protein treat right there and they love it. They love it. And I just have to say this. This is so strange. And I've, I've had people here while I'm doing, uh, while I'm dehydrating um, beef liver or chicken liver. It smells like chocolate. It's the weirdest thing. I've had, I've literally had like dog walkers or volunteers walk into my house and be like, are you making brownies or something like that? And I'll say I'm dehydrating liver. <laughs> it's so weird. It, it really does smell like sweet and like chocolate. So it's not a bad smell either when you're dehydrating it. Um, sardines. That's another thing that's, that's, uh, good in the dehydrator and fantastic for, for aging dogs. Um, I get boneless, skinless, uh, packed in water or olive oil. Um, sweet potatoes. That's another thing. You just cut in thin strips and put in the dehydrator and away you go. Um, <clears throat> another single source, a single protein source treat is a, a hard-boiled egg. Uh, not every resident loves hard-boiled eggs, but really like 99.5 of them do and have over the years. Um, and we have um, a chicken flock here. I, I mean, I think we have like, we have a lot of chickens, maybe close to 40. <laughs> but um, so I, I get eggs from the chickens for myself and Mr. Woody's Place and for the Woody's Place residents. So they are, you can't get more fresher eggs than what we're getting here at the sanctuary. Um, and I, I will hard boil them and give them uh, as treats um, periodically to the Woody's Place residents. Other times I'm actually putting them in their home cooked meal. Um, a large dog, such as a German Shepherd, can have one egg a day and not have a problem with that. But you have to make sure your dog's not allergic to eggs because, you know, some are. So it, it could be as simple as that, folks, making treats for your dogs, dehydrating some sort of meat um, or vegetable or fish, um, and hard-boiled egg, lickety split. You're done. That's it. You you freeze. Or I'm sorry. You don't freeze dry them. Um, you store them in an airtight container, or the eggs. You just you pop them in the fridge, pull them out when you're ready to use them, and that's it. 
It's it's that simple, and it's so much better and more cost effective um, than buying store bought treats. And the health benefits are just you know, yeah, you're not going to get better health benefits than that. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, oh, backing up here for a second. Yeah, as far as more health benefits, I'm sorry. Um, I don't have my glasses on because <laughs> I don't know. I don't have my glasses on, but I'm trying to read my notes here. Um, other health benefits. You can um, you can tailor the cookies to um, your dog's needs. So if you have a dog who's arthritic, make uh, turmeric cookies. Um, there's different different recipes for uh, cookies with coconut oil and turmeric, and um, turmeric is phenomenal, not just for dogs, but for us as well, um, who have achy joints and inflammation and things of that nature. Um, if you're going to use turmeric, you need to make sure you use a higher quality again. Um, so we've had we've had turmeric. Sorry. We've had uh, term- turmeric donated to the sanctuary, and unfortunately, I-, I haven't used it. Again, I'll donate it to another organization. Um, it's not all turmeric is not created equal, um, so you want to know where it's coming from. You want to make sure it's organic and um, you know a higher quality. So I do buy. I I will buy it online, but I also grow it here at the sanctuary. So I have a, um, I have an herb garden indoor and outdoor, depending on the weather. And, uh, I source a lot of my own herbs right from my herb garden. Again, not just for me and Mr. Woody's place, but for the residents as well. So, um, you can, again, health benefits, make, make the cookie special for your dog's needs. Um, if you have a dog who, uh, let's say has bad teeth. A lot of older dogs have bad teeth, right? Or they're missing teeth. Um, they can't chew big, hard cookies or treats. Uh, they need they need softer. Or they need smaller. Well, you can do that. You can make your own own treat for your dog and make it smaller, even and softer. Even the dehydrated. Even though that's so. If I have a resident here with with bad teeth, uh, they came to us. They have bad teeth. I'm not giving them dehydrated sweet potato. It's just too much. It's They can't really chew it. But I can still give them dehydrated organ meat because it, it kind of gets crumbly after a while. So I could crumble it up or I could just, I could break it up into smaller pieces before I even um, dehydrate it. Um, <clears throat> as, as far as any other treat goes, I, I, again, I can make it soft. And I can make it smaller for dogs who who have poor teeth. This way, they can either just kind of swallow it or they can gum it a little bit. And I don't have to worry about them choking on it. So you can you can um, you can uh, make the treats however you like for your dog's specific needs. All right. Another health benefit of making your own treats is as our dogs age. Um, some of them, their digestion just, you know, isn't so great. Um, maybe they have bouts of diarrhea. Maybe they have bouts of constipation. Um, <clears throat> you know, they might regurgitate a little bit. They might get um, um, acid reflux and things of that nature. So this is another area where homemade dog treats is is super beneficial for older dogs because again you can select ingredients that you want and that you don't want in the treat so if i have a dog with um you know gastrointestinal issues um <clears throat> excuse me i'm i'm going to look for ingredients like pumpkin oatmeal chicken chicken is a great one as long as it's like a you know white meat chicken you you know kind of stay away from the dark meat uh, just because it's a little bit more fatty um <clears throat> and 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 uh yogurt like a plain greek yogurt so i'm gonna look for ingredients like that um things with probiotics in it pre and probiotics in it to, to help um maximize their their gut you know microbiome um to to uh, help them um, 
keep their keep their gastrointestinal tra- tract in in check the best that they can. Now, um, you know, if, if if your dog really has issues, obviously you're going to go to the vet and it might need uh, medication. But as far as treats go, if I have a dog who has um, digestive health issues, I- I'm not buying store bought treats because there could be things in there that I don't want in there and that could make the situation worse. All right. Um, Okay. So I covered that limited ingredients, picking the ingredients that you want. Um, Texture, size, small, large, hard, soft. Um, Let's see what else. Oh, Okay, let's say, and this is this is really common. Um, I have a recipe for weight gain treats on the um, Life with Old Dogs blog. Uh, so you have an older German Shepherd um, like Brandy. Boy, oh boy! Toward the end there, we were really having a, a really hard time um, getting anything of nutritional value in Brandy because she was just really snubbing her nose at everything. Um, weight gain treats. So these, um, you know, these are like meatballs and um, you can make them, you know, bigger. You can make them smaller, uh, you know, it's a matter of just rolling them up in your hand or you can get all fancy and buy silicone molds and um, put them in silicone molds and cook them in silicone molds, whatever you want to do. But basically they look like meatballs, uh, but the ingredients in the weight gain treats are designed to help your older dog who's not eating regularly or a dog who's underweight put on put on weight and hopefully maintain that weight. Um, <clears throat> and you're, I don't really see too many commercial brand weight gain treats out there. <laughs> so uh, so that's you know another benefit of making um, making homemade dog treats yourself. Um, again, you you have control. You have control of what is going in them and what they're designed for um, and, and the texture and all that stuff. Um, and like I said, you know, it's, it's very cost effective, especially if you have multiple large dogs. So something I've seen over the years on, on social media, and I'm not knocking it, thank God that they're there, but I'm just saying... Uh, a lot of other rescues or, or sanctuaries um, are, are geared towards smaller dogs or, you know, middle-sized dogs, maybe 45 pounds, something like that, 50 pounds, but not toward big dogs like German Shepherds. And if you have German Shepherds or large dogs, especially multiple, then you know how expensive it is. It's not cheap by any means, especially when they get older. Um, so I have found that the homemade dog treats to be so much more cost effective. Um, you know, I, I can get a mass amount of ingredients and okay, I, I batch, I batch work. A lot of batch work is what I do where I'm spending like a lot of time in my kitchen one day making a whole bunch of different um, treats for the residents and then that's it. Then I'm not in the kitchen again doing that for another couple weeks. So for me, I think it's very cost effective, um, and I like to do it. Um, I like I like to cook. I like to cook. I like to bake. I like to be creative. Um, when I'm in my kitchen, like I said, on that day where I'm where I'm making, but it looks like a mad scientist has been in there. It's like just stuff is everywhere, <laughs> everywhere, and the dogs are like, "Wow, she's really on a bender right now. Look at her." <laughs> uh, hoping for something to fall, and they're all my little taste testers, so that's nice. Um, but, but it is, it is a lot more cost effective. Um, and again, you know, they're not going to get better treats in a store, in a box than, than they will if you take the time and find some recipes and make it yourself. So again, um, in the show notes and on social media, I'll be sure to include some recipes that I make here that are super easy, super simple. Um, you don't have to have any special tools or really any special ingredients or anything like that. You know, you can use exactly what you have in your kitchen, your your stove, maybe if you have a blender or a food processor, or you can even mix by hand. It's not it's not that big of a deal. 
Again, silicone molds. If you want to use silicone molds, you can. If you don't, you can just roll it up in your hand, right? Or you can make little patties. Or if you're making frozen treats, you can just use Dixie cups. It, it does, or ice cube trays. Seriously, it doesn't have to be um, like where you have to run out and buy all this stuff. Um, I mentioned I have a dehydrator. Again, you don't have to have a dehydrator. I just got my dehydrator a couple years ago. And I mean, I've been doing Woody's Place for a long time now. And I just used to use my stove before. So it's really easy. You just use trays, right? Baking sheets or whatever. And um, set your oven on whatever temperature it is you need. If it's like meat, then it's typically like 210 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. And you'll want to put it in your oven for like 8 to 10 hours, depending on how thick it is. And that's it. You just forget about it for a little while until it's done. So, um, but I do like the dehydrator. Now they're not that expensive. I mean, you can get a you can get a lower end one for right around two hundred dollars. Um, <clears throat> and I like the dehydrator because it has like four or five um, shelves in it. It's smaller, so it uses less power. And um, if I want to use my oven in that eight to 10 hours, well, then I, I used to have to take whatever I was dehydrating out to put like my dinner in or something like that. And then, you know, start over again with uh, whatever it was I was dehydrating. So I, I do like a dehydrator, but I'm, I'm just saying you don't have to. Um, so that's dehydrated treats, frozen treats. Again, you, you just you can mix it out up in a blender and like I said, put it in silicone molds, Dixie cups, ice cube trays. It doesn't matter. It's not that important. Your dog doesn't care how they're getting it, like what shape it's in. They just want it. And then uh, other treats, you can literally, you know, just make it like a cookie out of or a meatball or something along those lines. So, all right. I feel like I'm repeating myself here. Um, so that's all I have for now. So I'm letting you know. Now that um, we are coming up to Memorial Day weekend soon, and I take the summer off for the Life with Old Dogs podcast. Um, we may be back at it again in August. If not, it will be by September or the end of August. But I'm just letting you know, the summer is um, my time, <laughs> and I, I'm taking it off. So um, I hope you all have a wonderful summer. Uh, we, we may pop in for an episode here and there over the summer, but I, I'm not guaranteeing you that, um, our next season, which will be season eight will be taking place either. At, I think it's at the end of August, actually. All right. All right, folks. Uh, if you have any questions about home cooking for your dog or how to make cookies for your dogs, again, I am a, um, I am a pet nutrition coach, a certified pet nutrition coach, race certified actually. So if you have any questions, you can reach out. All right. Till next time.